Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at question 76 to 80 of section 3 of the purple booklet. This is a question with quite a lot of information. I've left um, the first bit out because 76 asks, uh, the major distinction between the two models is what? Well, looking at the two of them and reading some of the information, we know that the, the question is really asking, um, what way are the vesicles moving? So we can see that in number one, the cisternae themselves move, and then at the end, the vesicles are butted off. Whereas in figure two, the vesicles detach from each of the cisternae and then move along the chain themselves. And so the movement of things through the Golgi apparatus is through cisternae moving between um, vesicles in figure two. So that means the major distinction between the two models is that vesicles move between cisternae in two but not in one. So the answer for number 76 is going to be C. For 77, it says instructions from organelle Y to organelle X that lead to the production of protein. The instructions carried from organelle Y to organelle X are in the form of what? Well, we can see from figure one that organelle Y is clearly the nucleus and X is going to be the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the information will be passed through in the form of mRNA or messenger RNA. Therefore, the answer number 77 is going to be D. 78 and 80 refer to some extra additional information, which I've added some of it here. Um, I've put the pathway up here, and here I've summarized what's said in the paragraph above, and it talks about the different units and groups that are attached and how it changes if you go from G to U um, along the pathway. Uh, so we can see what these enzymes are doing, whether they're adding or taking away things. 78 asks, which of the intermediate substances contain galactose? Well, there's only one enzyme with galactose in the name, and it acts on T. Therefore, the only intermediate that would contain galactose would be T. It won't be U, obviously, because it's not an intermediate, it's the final product. So the answer for 78 is going to be A. If you look at 79 and 80, we're given even more information, uh, which you should look at as we go through these questions. 79 says the enzymes whose activity is greatest in tube 7 probably do what? So if we look at tube 7, the greatest peak is for monosidases 1 and 2, and for N-acetylglucosamine transferases 1 and 2. So looking at this table, I think it's a really useful way to see what are the activities, what sort of thing is happening uh, when these enzymes act. So monosidases obviously act on mannose, and the amount of mannose decreases. Therefore, we can say that enzyme is most likely to um, remove mannose. And what about the N-acetylglucosamine transferases? Well, we can see that the amount of GLC-NAC increases, meaning that it's most likely to add um, and acetylglucosamine. And therefore the answer for 79 is going to be the enzymes are probably removing mannose and adding N acetylglucosamine, which means the answer for 79 is going to be A. And then finally, if we look at number 80, it says which of the following is most likely, and it speaks about which tube contains uh, which cisternae. So the Golgi apparatus have lots of different layers like this. And moving along the pathway, things move along the cisternae like this. So the ones at the start of the pathway are going to be at this end, and the ones that are at the end of the pathway are going to be at this end. And therefore, the ones in the middle, we can call the medial ones. If we look at, um, in tube number nine, the most common uh, enzymes you'll find are galactose transferase, and sialic acid transferase. But where do they act in the pathway that I've got here? Well, we can see that they act um, at the very end of the pathway. But if that was the case, they'd be at the trans end. So we know A isn't true. We also know that it can't be B either because we'd expect that um, set of, yeah, we'd expect that set of uh, enzymes to be at the trans end. If we look at uh, C, then it says in tube number seven, trans cisternae predominate. Well, the enzymes involved um, 
in number seven, as I've already said, are the monosidase is one and two, and the N-acetylglucosamine transferase is one and two. And they're actually right in the middle of the um, pathway that we're looking at. And so we'd expect to find those in the medial cisterni. And therefore, in number 80, um, the answer would be D in tube number seven, medial cisterni predominate, because the enzymes you'd find there um, are the ones giving the greatest peaks in those tubes. So that was questions uh, 76 to 80 in section three of the purple booklet. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.